resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. We want to know what he's gone through. We want to know what he went through. Every pain he felt for us, we want to feel it. That's how we get closer to him. Just begin on one of you, oh God. To feel his presence, let his anointing fall on you. Let his presence come on you. He just wants you to praise him. He wants you to acknowledge him. And here's how it goes.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to worship this morning as we are gathering into worship. Isn't it good to just be in worship on this, the Lord's Day this morning, on Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, to God be the glory. Where are my worshipers this morning? I mean, don't fool me now. Are you excited to be in church on Resurrection Sunday? After two years, we can gather in the sanctuary on Resurrection Sunday to God be the glory. But of course, we know that we still have worshipers that are sharing with us and worshiping with us online because over this time we have connected with so many and so many have connected with us who are not even in this state and so we want to make sure that we welcome all of our viewers all of those who are sharing and worshiping with us online and so welcome to worship this morning we are so grateful that you are sharing with us and so delighted that you are celebrating your resurrection Sunday morning with us or whenever you may find yourself worshiping it is by no mistake or happenstance that you are worshiping and sharing with us we give God praise we give God honor and glory this morning why because he has risen just like he said he would we had an awesome worship experience at 7 30 with our sunrise service and we expect nothing different as we gather into the house of worship and so for those of our worshipers that are coming in and you have children as you're coming in um, and you are gathering in the worship experience, you do have the opportunity to take them over um, as they are preparing to worship um, in their own way for their Easter extravaganza. Did y'all see how they getting all set up? Got the truck out there and it's smelling all good. I said, I'm about to go out here and celebrate with the children this morning, but we are excited. We are just grateful and thankful for everything that has taken place in the life of this ministry over this weekend from our feeding, um, from the opportunity to share. Y'all, we are the hands and feet of Jesus, and we have been able to be able to do that over this weekend. And we thank God because that's really what it's truly all about, and that's what this weekend reminds us of. And so by the end of the weekend, every worshiper, every, I'm sorry, every believer, you know, you should be tired after Easter weekend. We should be a little weary because that means we've done what we've been instructed to do over the celebration experience because we are to impact lives. We are to be able to remind persons of what this season is all about. And so we thank God. We thank God for you all who allow us to make ministry happen. And so First Lady just wants to say thank you and for us to be reminded that it is because we serve a risen Savior that we are to be reminded that we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand all over the sanctuary. And as we prepare to invite God's presence into this place, it's good to see you this morning. It's good to be able to look upon your faces. It's good to see some faces in person that we have not seen in a while to God be the glory. Come on, let's lift up hands all over this sanctuary. And we just want to say, God, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you that we have an opportunity to gather in worship. We thank you that we can celebrate our risen Savior. We thank you that we can gather to give your name praise, to give you glory, to give you honor. God, we thank you this morning. And so, Holy Spirit, we invite your presence in this place. God, we want your anointing to fall fresh in this place. We're asking you to do it again, God. Meet us at the point of our needs, God. Let your anointing fall fresh. From the worship team to the persons in the seats, to the door, to the ushers, God, let your glory fill this place. And so right now, we open up our mouths to speak well of you, oh God. We declare that you're holy, that you're righteous, that you're mighty, that you're powerful, that you're an awesome God. 
that you're the powerful God, that you are our way maker, that you are our provider, that you are the holy God. And God, we stand on your word this morning and we thank you this morning. And we are reminded that we serve the true and risen Savior God. And so we are excited this morning. We come in this worship experience with anticipation and expectation in our hearts, oh God. We're not going to wait for somebody to push us or to prime us, oh God, but we're going to think on the goodness and all that you've already done for us, oh God. And we are already reminded. And when we woke up this morning, we already knew how the story ended. And so we already knew that you've risen, God. And so we celebrate the true and risen Savior. So God, that's exactly what we're going to do this morning. We're going to celebrate you, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so we don't focus on anything else but to worship you. So we open up our mouths to speak well of you, oh God. We clap our hands right now to worship you and to celebrate you. We lift up holy hands to magnify our King of kings and Lord of lords. God, we celebrate and we thank you now, God. Have your way in this service. Move by your spirit, God and be magnified in the name of Jesus we pray we thank you this morning come on that's right thank you this morning there we go to my true worshipers the one that's excited the one that has thanksgiving in their hearts this morning we thank you this morning and we celebrate the king of kings and the lord of lords it's in the name of Jesus we pray Thank God and amen. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, let's magnify him. Come on, let's celebrate him. Come on, let's worship him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, thank God. Come on, come on for a few more seconds. Come on and find your press this morning for just a few more seconds. Come on, let's invite him into this place. Let's set the atmosphere of worship this morning. Come on, let's set the atmosphere of worship. This is not just a routine. This is not out of form or fashion. But we've come to worship our true and living Savior. Come on, let's celebrate with the worship team this morning. Well, if you're excited to be in the house of the Lord, can you show some type of sign this morning? Clap your hands, all you people and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, let's set this atmosphere right. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful to be in the house of the Lord? Just one more time. Hallelujah. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate the King. That's what you come to do. Clap your hands all over the room one more time. And just give God praise. Shout hallelujah in the room. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands all over the room. We're going to make one big praise team. Is that all right? We come to celebrate his name. Hallelujah. Come on, say, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Yeah. It's Prince. 
Hallelujah, for he is God and God alone. Can you lift your hands all over the room? And while your hands are lifted, can you begin to open up your mouth and just begin to worship him? Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Hey, yes, Lord. You didn't let us stay where we were. But God, we thank you. We thank you for choosing us. Even when we didn't choose you, hey, you continue to choose us. So, God, we exalt your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I hear you. You have won the victory. If you know it, can you help me lift it as a house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Y'all sound good. Sing, death could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. And you see it in majesty. You are the reason. Hallelujah. Come on, let's declare it all together. One voice say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory.
you just worship him? The risen king, the risen savior. Hey, for the sacrifice he made on Calvary's cross. He died so that we might live. And this morning we honor you, your majesty. We honor you, hey. We bow before you in humble submission. You are God and God alone, hey, hey. You are God and God alone, hey. Sovereign King, hey. Sovereign Savior, we lift your name. We lift your name, hey. The name that's mighty to save and mighty to heal. He's a mighty to deliver. He's a mighty to set free. We lift your name. Jesus, hey. Jesus, I dare you to throw his name in the atmosphere. I believe miracle signs and wonders can happen in this type of glory. Jesus. She, whatever you need, it's tied in the name of Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. Glory. I feel a shifting in here. Glory to his name. We give you glory. There's a glory exchange in the heavens, and as we give him glory this morning, he's sending glory right here. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. He's sending glory right here. Yeah. Hey. We welcome your spirit, we welcome you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise him in this house. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. That's right. His presence is in this room. Do you feel him right now? Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and worship him. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, oh God. Come on, everyone standing, everyone standing, everyone standing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you're standing and as we are preparing to enter into this time of prayer, it is because today we come under the power of the victory of Jesus that as we prepare to come before the altar today, I want to, in this moment right now, the weight of his glory is just resting in this room today. And as we prepare to pray today, I would encourage those of you that are online, if you would go ahead now and begin to just list your prayer requests and your prayer needs today. Just begin to put them in the chat right now. We have intercessors that are ready to respond and lift up those prayer needs and prayer concerns. And for those of you that are in the room today, I want to invite you to the altar this morning as we prepare to pray this morning. If you have a special prayer need, special prayer concern, or maybe you're interceding for someone, I want to invite you to the altar this morning. Today, um, as we're coming in prayer, maybe right where you're standing, there, there may be people that you're interceding for this morning, and if you could just put their names in the atmosphere. Begin to put their names in the atmosphere. He's won the victory. <laughs> He's won the victory. Whatever you're facing, whatever, whatever your trial, whatever your tribulation, because he's won the victory, I got victory. And so as prayer concerns are being listed in our chat right now, today, we want to continue to lift up the McKinney family. Come as close as you can. Come as close as you can. Come as close as you can. Others are coming. Let's get to the altar. We want to lift up, we want to continue to lift up the McKinney family in terms of their loss that they've experienced this past week. And 
just this morning. I don't know if she's watching, but I did. I want to let you know, Sanibia, that I did get your message. I hope you're watching. They had intentions of coming to church this morning, but their grandmother passed. They have been caretaking for her, and so we want to lift up Sanibia and her family. She passed this morning, and so we want to lift them up. Um, and Jessica, we know your daughter was involved in the house fire that happened. I believe that was in Portsmouth this week, and we want to lift up your, your daughter and the other children that were in that fire. Some of you may have saw that on the news this week, but we thank God that God is a keeper. He's a protector. We never know where hurt, harm, or danger is lurking, but we thank God for his angels that are with us. Every day, all the time, goodness and mercy. Thank God they're following. So whatever your prayer need, whatever your concern is today, let, we bring them before this altar today. And just as we finish singing today, we come knowing that I shall be victorious. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Because death couldn't hold you. Whatever I'm facing, whatever I'm going through, it won't hold me, it won't keep me, because he is the risen Savior. Father, we, we come before you now with humbled hearts. We come before you now thanking you today, God, one that you kept us another week and for that God we say thank you you kept us all week long you've allowed us to work and go to school and go about our chores and you brought us to the house of worship on this resurrection Sunday and for that we want to say thank you thank you that we're still in the land of the living we thank you God for life being well with us as it is right now we say thank you Thank you for the provisions and thank you for the resources and thank you for the ways you've made. We say thank you. Now, God, many in this room, this we haven't seen and been in this place in two years. And we want to say thank you that you're the God that has seen us through a pandemic. You've seen us through job loss and you've seen us through sickness and You've seen us through all the ups and downs. And right now, God, before we ask you for anything, we just want to lift our hands right now and just tell you thank you. Some of us have had to go by the cemetery and some have had to go by the hospitals and some have been by the courthouse. And But through it all, God, you have kept us. And for that, we want to say thank you right now. God, you already know our needs and you already know our concerns and you already know the weight that many are carrying in this moment right now and you see every prayer request in the chat and you've heard every name that we've uttered in this room and we lift it up to you right now and we ask God that you just make a way we ask God that you do what you want to do we ask God that you throw your weight around Prove in this moment that you are God. And God, we've come this morning boldly before your throne of grace. Because your word teaches us and tells us that we can come boldly before your throne. And here we are at this altar. Coming boldly, believing by faith that every need that we have is already met. And we declare it right now that you are meeting every need right now. You're providing jobs, you're providing direction, you're providing healing, you're leading us out of dark places and dark spaces now. We declare it is so in Jesus' name. So thank you, God, this morning that as we leave these concerns at your altar, we're not going to carry them back to our seat. But right now, in this moment, we declare that it's done in Jesus' name. Healing is mine in Jesus' name. Peace is mine in Jesus' name. 
direction is mine in Jesus name you're opening up windows pouring us out blessings and we declare it in Jesus name open doors opportunities are coming now in Jesus name healing now in Jesus name forgiveness now in Jesus name we declare it is so comfort those who are hurting now in Jesus name we declare it is so and devil we send you notice now we will not be depressed we will not be defeated but the joy of the Lord is our strength and we declare today that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus victory is already ours because it belongs to you in Jesus name if you believe it, if you receive it, I dare you to give him a shout of praise and declare it is so. I need 50 people right now in the chat to type right now, it is so. Elbow your neighbor, hug your neighbor all the way back to your seat and tell him it is so in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God I got the victory. If you got it, somebody holler, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> there you go. Come on, put a praise on it. Put a, put a praise on it with the clapping of your hands the opening of your mouths. Come on and rejoice. I got the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, ABC. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Woo! Hey, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. I want to welcome you to worship. Look at somebody say, it's good to see you. Look back at them and say, it's good to be seen. It's good to be seen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you and greet you this morning. I want to let you know that we are so delighted to have you worshiping with us. To all of you that are worshiping with us online this morning, we thank God for your presence in the house today. It's just good to be in the Lord's house on Resurrection Sunday, isn't it, somebody? Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to worship. Listen, if you're worshiping with us today for the very first time, if you would do me a huge favor and just slip your hand in the air. Our ushers have connection cards that they would love to share with you. I would love to be able to connect. I see one hand there. I see a hand. That's right here. We're not going to embarrass you. We ain't going to make you say anything, but it's good to see some of you. Some of you I haven't seen in a while. Man, it is just good to see y'all faces in the house this morning. For those of you online, listen, fill out that connection card for all of our online worshipers. Thank God for all of you that are worshiping with us all around the globe, all around the country. We are so delighted to have you worshiping with us this morning in this space. Listen, for those of you that haven't transitioned, if you have children, we do have our resurrection party going on next door, and they're having a ball next door. So if you have children fifth grade and under, I would encourage you to let them go over to be a part of the wonderful things that are happening next door um, for our children, uh, but um, we thank God for you all worshiping with us this morning and in this service today. Our worship team is going to get ready to come and prepare us for the word of God this morning, but right before they come, I want you to take an opportunity to ABC, and can you and I officially praise God for our new praise and worship leader. Can we give her a warm welcome, Christian Williams? Let's welcome her to the family, ABC Online. Let's welcome Christian Williams. We are so excited and delighted about her and being a part of our church. Listen, I'm telling you, God always provides. Do I have a witness here? Listen, God always provides. God always provides. He always provides. When there's ever a transition in your life, believe in faith. God already has an answer. 
He already has an answer waiting, and Christian Williams was our answer. And we thank God that God was already preparing it. Even before we knew it, God was preparing it. And I'm so excited that she is here. We welcome her to our ministry. We welcome her to our church. Her mother is worshiping with us this morning. And, man, um, and we want to welcome her mother. We have been didn't know it, but we've been knowing each other for years, even before Christian. It's a small world in terms of the churches and the connections and just the circle, but we are so delighted to have her worshiping with us. And can we, while we're doing that, praise God for Miss Tammy, Miss Sharon, and one of our newest worship members, Dara. Can we welcome all of them? We just love them. That's right. Go ahead and love on them. Y'all tell them every week. And, and, and some of you online have said, Pastor, can you give us their names? Can you give us their names? We don't know who everybody is. Well, I just gave you everybody's name. Miss Tammy, Miss Sharon, Miss Dara, and we thank God for our band. Can we praise God for them? And we thank God for Brother BJ and Brother AJ and Brother D that's in our, our new drummer. We thank God for them. They're gifted. They're going to come and prepare us for the Word of God. Are y'all ready for the Word of God today? Come on, let's put our hands together and receive our worship team as they're coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we just slip our hands in the air and just say something sweet to our Savior? Our vows will never forget the sacrifice he made. And for that sacrifice, we offer you our worship. With the sincerity of our hearts, we just come back to say thank you. Hallelujah. Don't let your worship stop. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. With nails in his hands 
know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. You ought to get excited in your soul. Say, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Now you ought to clap your hands like you've got victory in the room. I dare you to clap your hands like you know you're a winner. I dare you to clap your hands like you know you're free. I dare you to open up your mouth and hear Zion and let's lift the name of Jesus high today. We lift him high today. He is high and lifted up and the train of his robe, it fills this temple. We cry glory. We cry glory. I'm going to move, but I dare you to open up your mouth before the word comes and just cry glory. We give the glory to his name. What's his name? Jesus. Call it one, two, three. Say Jesus. you praise the name I believe something shifting this morning we came to celebrate him for his resurrection but I believe there's a deposit from the Holy Spirit hey, and we're ready to receive open up your mouth in here and give God glory 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 Glory, glory, glory. What we call glory, glory has got to show up. Glory, glory, glory. Praise Him. 
make the devil mad right now. You better praise it. Woo! Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> praise him in your house. Praise him in your kitchen. Praise him in the sanctuary. a way maker. <laughs> Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. And we thank you. We honor you. That's right. Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and worship him. Give him the praise that he's due. Give him the worship that he's due. Give him the honor that he's due. Nobody but God has seen me through. Nobody but God has saw you through it. Because he lives, I live. Thank God that the message of the cross says that whatever I go through on Friday, thank God that my Sunday morning is coming. Thank God. That's right. Before you go to your seat, can you just give him your best praise? Now, that was for me. It would be right. But I said, give God your best praise. We honor him. And we bless him. Bless his holy name presence of the Lord is in this place. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, excuse me, I ain't cut up like that in a long time. I ain't... Excuse me. Woo! I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. 
<laughs> oh, God. But this is what the mothers were in the church praying for on yesterday. This is, they were praying for the power of the Holy Ghost to fall. Every seat that you're sitting in, mothers were in here praying over. Your seat is anointed. They were praying for you and praying for all of you online. Thank God today. I want to invite you in these few moments that I have today to journey with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, the Gospel of Luke 24. And I want to begin reading at verse 1 of this Gospel. Gospel of Luke 24, beginning at verse 1. Today I'm reading out of the NIV translation. And there you will find um, these words. If you got it, say, I got it. Well, I see some of you are standing, so that's the, that's the custom of the house. So y'all, let's stand for the word. I was going to let you rest your feet. <laughs> oh, God. So let's stay in. Oh, some of y'all going to get a good nap this afternoon. That nap going to be good today. <laughs> that nap going to be real good today. Oh, God. Luke 24, verse 1, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then, they remembered his words. They came back from the tomb. They told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women. Because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. He went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of God. Verse 6 says, He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered over into the hands of sinners and be crucified on the third day and rise again. Then they remembered his words. Today I want to take this text as the Holy Spirit shall guide and I want to preach today about this. A comforting reminder. A comforting reminder reminder you may be seated in the presence of our God I have a question for you this morning and it's this have, have you ever had the experience of watching someone die Have you ever had the encounter in your life where you've experienced losing a loved one? A family member, a friend, 
that you had a personal and intimate relationship with that end up transitioning into death. Many of you in this room can relate because you've had experiences like that where you've lost a loved one and you've lost someone that was personal and close to you that transitioned. Now, many of us know in this room, and some argue, and I, I come to the same conclusion, that there ultimately one or two ways people transition. There's some persons that come into our life, family member, that sometimes they linger, they're in sickness, and their transition is slow. Many of you have experienced that, where you've had a loved one fade, and you watch their health and their bodies decline. And that, had, and come, that comes with its own weight, doesn't it? Some of you in this room know and have had the experience of losing someone tragically all of a sudden, whether it was a car crash or a sudden heart attack or some tragic event that occurs and you've lost a loved one through death. Some will argue that they would rather not watch a loved one decline or they would rather lose someone quickly, but in my years of ministry and doing this, I, I, I say at the end of the day, you still come to the same conclusion. <laughs> the feeling that you're left with, the emotions in the moment, whether they've lingered or whether it's been tragic, you are still left feeling the same. The same emotions, the same thought processes, the same sense of numbness. And if you had that experience, even as I'm talking right now, you can remember whether it was your mother or parent or grandparent, sister or brother, or whoever it was, even as I'm talking in this moment right now, that visual, that playback comes to your mind. Because the reality is, is you can never get it out of your head. You, you can never forget the phone call. You can never forget the message. You can never forget calling their name in the next room and they don't respond. You, you'll, never, you'll never forget that. I, I will never forget the call I got after leaving Florida to visit my father for what I thought that I did not know would be the last time and then get the call early in the morning on my birthday. I'll never forget that call. Every time now I hear phones ring at certain times in the morning, it sends those thoughts. That's a sense of trauma. So you can only imagine what these followers of Jesus are feeling and going through in this moment. Persons who had been intimate and up close with Jesus and had grown to love Jesus and had grown to even worship him and follow him and spent intimate time with him. You can only imagine what they were feeling on what we now call Easter Sunday morning. For them, it was not Easter Sunday morning. It was coming out of a whirlwind of a week for them that started out with them Witnessing Jesus raise a dear friend, Lazarus, and brother from the dead. These same folk followed Jesus into the city, and they were with Jesus, standing along the side about Jesus in the crowd, and they were with him just a week ago as the crowd was calling out his name, and they were throwing and laying down palm branches as Jesus rolled into the city on that donkey. They were with him that day. And they were with him as people flooded the streets on that Monday. Sharing with him, they can hear the crowd still calling his name. Then he goes into the temple and he cleanses the temple and then gathers them on Tuesday and continues to teach and prophesy to them on Tuesday. And then on that Wednesday of that week, they have a day of recline and retreat and private and intimate moments with Jesus. Then they gathered with him. On that Thursday in that upper room to celebrate the Passover, 
And Jesus shares intimately with them. And then by Thursday night, he's taken off by the Roman soldiers. All night long, drugged from one courthouse to the next. Then by Friday, he's being crucified. All in a week. Then, not only is he put to death, but he's brutally put to death to the point that they see him and they cannot recognize him. All in a week. Now, now think about it. You've had your own moment. Some of you can identify. <laughs> All in a week. Then that Saturday, there is silence. I I really believe that Saturday represents in in the physical way for them, it was suffering in silence. There's nothing we hear that happened on Saturday. They're suffering in silence, and here's where we find the text. It is in that silence that they're suffering. And so then Sunday morning comes because they honor the Sabbath, and then Sunday morning comes, and so these women have a, what I call this morning, a perplexed response. They're perplexed. They, they're numb. They're, they're experiencing a sense of trauma. They're experiencing some, a sense of grief. And they wake up perplexed, not knowing what to do. Has anybody ever been there? <laughs> Has anybody ever been there where you just don't know what to do? You're numb. You're trying to still collect your thoughts. You're trying to get a hold of all of what you just experienced and just witnessed. I believe y'all, come on, let's testify and be real. I don't think there was much sleep Saturday night. I don't think there was Bernice. I don't think they slept much that Saturday night. I I believe all throughout that night they kept waking up and they, they saw, have you ever had that night where you saw every hour on the clock? I wish I had a real crowd this morning. I mean, have you ever had trauma and trial and tribulation that kept you up at night and you saw 1 o'clock, you saw 2 o'clock, you saw 3 o'clock, you saw 4 and 5, and by the time you doze off, it was time to get up. Anybody ever had a night like that? And you wake up tired, you wake up exhausted, you wake up anxious, and I believe that's how they woke up that morning. I believe they woke up feeling all of those things that you and I have ever experienced, if you've ever had a moment of grief and trauma in your life. But I'm encouraged by a nuance in this, and I'm going to tell you this on my way. I'm, I'm encouraged by this because one of the things that I haven't appreciated before, but I appreciate it now after going through my own things in life, one of the things I love about these women is the fact that they were together. See, some of you will appreciate this when you go through something. They were together. Can I tell you, it's one thing in life to have to go through things. But it's another thing to have people there to go through it with you. Do I have a witness here? See, anybody that's ever had to go through something in the house knows that you appreciate the people that are with you through trials and tribulation. And I thank God that these women had a circle. And can I tell somebody in this room, if you ever go through loss and you ever go through disappointment, don't you isolate yourself. Don't you get standoffish. But you ought to welcome every call, every text message, every person that's there to support you and encourage you. Some of you find out who your real friends are and your real supporters are when you're going through things. Has anybody ever gone through something and sometimes you don't need them to be deep. You don't need them to be super spiritual. All you do is just need their presence there and you just need, baby, everything gonna be all right. You gonna make it. Come on, somebody tell me. It has been those type of things that help you get through the go through. These women were with each other. And I believe they were supporting each other, encouraging each other, wiping each other's tears. And I believe some were having high moments and low moments. But y'all, they were together. 
And they were supporting each other, but yet they have this perplexed response. And what is their response? Well, they wake up that day, and they wake up this morning numb, grief, experiencing trauma. And this is what they do, y'all. They, they, they revert back, or they, they revert back to what was a routine and a ritual of their day. They wake up that morning and they, they have a perplexed response and their perplexed response causes them now to go back to the tomb where Jesus' body was. Somebody say was. His body was there. They wake up that morning out of ritual because it was a burial ceremony that persons would take spices and then go anoint the bodies of those who had been crucified or put to death. They would then go to those tombs and anoint the bodies with spices. And so here these women, they go to the tomb. They, I believe, have good intentions, but it's a perplexed response. And I'll say more about that in a moment because what they end up doing, y'all, they end up looking for a dead body and not a risen savior have you ever been in a point in your life where you responded to what you may have been going through or dealing with and you end up looking in the wrong places and turned into the wrong things <laughs> I'm gonna talk to this side of the room I, I, I know you got on your Easter hookups today and looking all spiritual and, and all holy this morning. But has anybody on this side ever looked in the wrong places? Turned to the wrong things? How about on this side? Has anybody ever been on the point in their life? I, I know you ain't got to tell us what it was, but can you identify of looking at the wrong things and turning to the wrong places in your search? See, sometimes our response, we have a tendency to revert and turn to the wrong things and turn to the wrong places in our search and pursuit to satisfy what we're experiencing and going through in those moments. <laughs> That's why you got to be careful even after you get saved is sometimes your trauma and sometimes what you're going through, sometimes you can't tell what your triggers are. Talk, Sheridan. That will cause you to revert back to some old tendencies, some old habits, and some old practices. Come on. You don't know what will set you off and set you back. Be careful, be careful even before you judge these women and be careful before you judge somebody else because you don't know what will come into your life that will cause you to be triggered to go back to some old people, to some old places, and to some old things. They have a perplexed response and they go looking for a dead body and not a risen savior. They go to this tomb out of a ritual, out of a custom, out of an old routine, and they end up going to the wrong place, looking for him in the wrong place. They go looking for a dead body. We already know how the story ends, but I want you to put, I want to put you in their context. They go looking for a dead body, not a risen savior. And it's while they are looking, in the wrong place, looking for the wrong thing. It's there that an angel is there. And they get there, wrong place. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, wrong place. Looking for the wrong thing. But an angel is there. And the angel has this message for them. Why are you here? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Look at somebody and say, what you doing here? Watch this. Don't you remember what he told you? Why 
while you were still with him in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered over into the hands of sinners, be crucified and raised on the third day. Then they remembered. My God. Y'all, we see a perplexed response. We see a perplexed response. But, but secondly, what I appreciate about this text this morning is we see a promised reminder. What, what, I, what, I, what I love before, I, before we judge them, before we criticize them this morning, here's what I appreciate about this text this morning is, is some of you may be able to identify you can be in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, but God will send you a reminder of his promises in your life. They were in the wrong place, but God already had angels there to give them a revelation that reminded them of what he had already promised them. <laughs> the angels reminded them, don't you remember what he told you? Don't you remember what he told you, that, 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 that the Son of Man would be crucified, but remember he told you? Now, this becomes significant, y'all, because it is at this point where they remembered, they have the revelation, they have the aha moment that it comes to mind. Now, they were in a cloud. They were in a fog. They had forgotten. Anybody ever been in a point in their life where they forgot about the promises of God? And doesn't that happen, y'all? You can go through some trouble. You can go through some disappointments. You can go through some storms in life and you can have some setbacks and disappointments in your life and this is what happens y'all then you forget you forget all of the promises and the reassurances that God has given you in your word and so this is what happens to us we go through divorce we go through job loss we go through hurts and disappointments and we end up losing things and we end up having hurts in life and then this is what happens y'all we so we so quickly forget everything that God has already promised us and reassured us in his word and so there you are at the cemetery there you are with the pink slip and you forget about the fact that God already owns the cattle upon a thousand hill that there you are in the doctor's office and you get word that you've been diagnosed with a condition and there you are facing cancer and then you forget about the fact that he is the bomb in Gilead that he has more medicine in the hem of his garment that can heal the sin sick world I wish I had a witness in this house we forget when we're going through things and we've had people walk out of our lives and we've had people hurt us we forget that the word of God says vengeance is mine says the Lord that if you dig one ditch you better dig two because the one you dug for me just might be for you and I'm so glad that when we're going through these things the Lord sometimes has to remind us of how powerful he is Sometimes he has to remind us that we are his children. Is there anybody in the house today glad that the Lord will send you a reminder of his greatness, of his power? There you are with tears in your eyes, facing trauma, facing grief. And God says, let me remind you of how great and awesome I am. Let me remind you that I have all the answers. Let me remind you that this trouble didn't catch me off God. Somebody is sitting here today and the Lord wants you to be reminded that I've already spoken blessings over your life. I've already spoken promises over your life. Don't you lose yourself and forget everything that I've already told you. See, they would have remembered if they would have remembered up front what Jesus told them they never would have went to the tomb. <laughs> they never would have went to the tomb. They never would have went to the tomb, Nancy, when they woke up Sunday. Because Jesus told them, I'm going to be crucified, but I'm going to get up from the grave. And when, Linda, I get up, I want you to meet me, I got somebody to read the Bible, in Galilee, not the tomb, but they were supposed to meet him 70 miles away in Galilee. And thank God.
doing the wrong thing. Looking in the wrong places. God already got angels waiting for me in the wrong place. They got a revelation that's going to change my direction. I wish I had a witness in this house. And then they remembered. Then, then they remembered. And they said, ah, yeah, that's what he told us. And they leave the tomb. And they go running to tell the rest of the disciples. And so, y'all, as I close this morning, we see in this text, one, we see the perplexed response. We see the promised reminder. But then lastly, y'all, we see a personal reaction. Notice the reactions vary. Like they vary in this room, like they vary in the world right now. When the women leave the tomb, they go and tell the rest of the disciples and the followers. And here it is. The Bible says us, tells us that there are varying responses and reactions to the news about Jesus is alive. The Bible tells us right here, it's right here. It says that the disciples heard the news and his own disciples said it was nonsense. <laughs> see, see, look at, look at somebody and say, now don't judge them. Don't judge them. Don't, 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 don't judge them. Now don't judge them. Because, see, sometimes you can be so traumatized <laughs> that you can't even think straight. Huh? So, can I digress for a moment? See, that's, that's, why, that's why I need a, I, I, I need a pastor, I need a preacher, and I need a therapist. Because sometimes I can be so traumatized, huh? I can't think straight. It's hard for me to process. It's hard for me to accept. I can't get nobody to talk to me in here. See, we sit here, and now we want to judge the disciples. How dare they? How couldn't they believe that you? Well, here you are some 2,000 years later. You, I'm talking about in this moment. And guess what? There are still people that don't believe. Some of you left folk home that think all of this is nonsense. It's hard for them to accept. It's hard for them to rationalize how can somebody be crucified, buried, and get up three days later. It's hard for some people to accept and believe. Some think it's ignorant. Some ignore it. The, the, the Bible says that his disciples ignore it. They say, this is nonsense. Y'all talking crazy. And there are people in this world, you got co-workers and neighbors that still questioned the fact that he lives. So you got some that ignore, but watch this. Peter, look at it in the text. It said, Peter heard the news. And Peter says, say, say what, what y'all say? Jesus lives. He's, he, he wasn't in the tomb. And, and Peter couldn't accept it at first. Why? So Peter does this. Peter has to go to the tomb for, to him, for himself. Now, mind you, they all supposed to be in Galilee. <laughs> Jesus waiting in Galilee. Peter got to go to the tomb for, for himself, and the Bible says he goes and inspects, and he sees strips of linen there. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the strips of linen lying 
by themselves, and he went away, watch this, wondering to himself what had happened. So, so we got one group that, that just blatantly ignores. Then we got a Peter who inspects for himself. That, that, that some of you may be even in this room right now. You, 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 are, you are here, but you still, <laughs> I know you don't want to put your hand up. I ain't going to embarrass you. Your boy ain't going to do you like that. You're here, I, and I appreciate the fact that you're here. Can somebody put their hands together? Somebody's watching me online. You watching? Uh, but you ain't all about this Jesus thing yet. But I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're in this room. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that your inquisitiveness. I'm glad your curiosity ha has been piqued that it is cause for you to seek further examination. I'm glad. And many for many, that's the beginning. I, I, I need to know more. I need to learn more. I, I need more evidence. I need more. I, I, I need more. I, I, okay, I'm trying to rationalize it. And I know, I know somebody's watching me right now. Somebody's in this room. And see, the thing is, you're trying to embrace everything with your head. <laughs> and, and you're trying to make sense with it all with your head. And my prayer for you today, if you're a Peter in this room and if you're a Peter watching me and you're at the place of curiosity, you're at the place of wanting to know more, I'm, I'm, this is my prayer for you. I, I'm, I'm praying that you end up making the head and heart connection. Yeah, yeah. I'm praying for you that you end up making the head and heart connection because you're not going to fully get there until like Peter did, until you make the faith connection because something is beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding. See, if I, if I have, if I doubt in the beginning, Genesis 1, where it says in the beginning, God, if I struggle there, I'm going to struggle with everything else in the Bible. If I struggle with in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth that I'm going to struggle with a virgin birth and I'm going to show struggle with a savior that got up three days later. If I don't get the first line of the Bible in the beginning, God, then I ain't going to understand or grab hold by faith. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus or anything else in the book. But my prayer is for you today. If you hang around, if you hang around, <laughs> If you hang around, you're going to eventually get what you need to make the connection of faith. Do I have some witnesses in here? Because some of us used to be that person. Come on. You ain't always been a big Bible toting, scripture carrying person lifting your hands through praise and worship. Some of us have our own quandaries. And the truth of the matter is some of you have been walking with Jesus a long time and still... So you got, you got one group that ignore, you got one group that says it's nonsense, you got one group like Peter who says, I, I need more, um, I need more evidence, I need to see for myself. He goes to the tomb and he leaves the tomb still wondering. And, and elbow your name and say, neighbor, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because what I believe, like Peter ends up, is eventually... Eventually, this same Peter ends up being the preacher. You'll get the evidence that you need. But here's the other group. The other group is the, is the women. The women, so we got those that ignore. We got those that inspect. But then we got those who heard the news and got excited. <laughs> the women left that tomb and, and they were excited. Now I'm done. I'm, we're going to get ready to check the house and I hope you have a great brunch wherever you're going. But, but I want to know as I close this morning, which group you in? I, 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 I want to know this morning when, when you heard the news about a Savior being raised from the dead. 
I want to know this morning, which group are you in? Are, are you in the group that just ignored it? I don't think you ignored it because you're in the room today. You're watching me online this morning, so I don't think you quite ignored it. And maybe you're in this room and you might be in the group that, that that's still inspecting a little closer. You might be in that group, but I thank God for you because you're in the room this morning. But I want to know how many of you are in the third group. That when you hear about the Savior being raised from the dead that you're in this room this morning and you can get excited that you think about the fact that he was crucified on Friday. But then God raised him up early Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Does anybody get excited about the fact that my Savior lives? Is there anybody watching me right now that can lift their hands and open up their mouth? And when I think about Jesus, the fact that he died for my sins, he died and paid the price. And because he lives, I live also. Is there anybody in this room that can and get excited about that and if you are excited you ought to put your hands together you ought to make some noise in this room and act like you're glad about it that he paid the price for my sins slap by with your neighbor and say neighbor he thought I was worth it he thought I was worth it can somebody give God praise that he thought you and I were worth dying for and so he gave his life so that I might have life and have it more abundantly and if you're glad about it if you're excited about it I dare you to throw your head back put your hands together and say I'm glad did it for me and I'm excited about the fact that he lives he lives and because he lives I can face anything that comes in my tomorrow because he lives. Now this cross has new meaning. Before Jesus, the cross was just a form of Roman, a form of Roman punishment. There was nothing significant about a cross other than it was a form of a Roman death sentence. But Jesus gives that a whole new meaning. You and I would never look at a cross the same because for us a savior was crucified that paid the penalty for my sins because he lives I now have the right to eternal life can somebody give him praise in this room Come on, stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. If you're watching right now, I want every head bowed. I want every head bowed quickly. In this room, my question for you today, what are, what are you looking for? What are, what are you, for you watching, what are, what are you looking for? Huh. I, I want you to know today, that whatever you're looking for, I believe, I believe the answer is Jesus. Yeah. I believe your answer can be found in Jesus. <laughs> There's a place that causes us to search, and many we've searched in the wrong places, man. Huh. We don't even have time today to, to testify all about it. Whew. But I'm so glad that 
in wrong places, I can still find him. That my directions can change. My outlook on life can change. Whew. Thank God that he loves us enough and he's gracious enough to send us revelations in places <laughs> that we shouldn't have ever been. If you're watching me today, if you're in this room, I, I have I have a invitation for you this morning. And I have an invitation. And my invitation is threefold. If you're watching, in a moment, you'll be able to fill out a link for whatever decisions you make this morning. But if you're in this room, man, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad to have you here. But I, but I believe today, today can be a day of new beginnings. Today can be a day of fresh start. So listen to me closely. If you're in this room right now, first thing, I want you to ask yourself a question. And, and this is the question. Am I saved? What do I mean by that? Am I in a secured relationship with Jesus Christ that if Jesus were to come back to this earth today, that I know I would go back to be with him in eternity forever? That's the question. If you're unsure, if your answer is no, I don't think I'm saved. I've never repented of my sin. I've never asked Jesus to come into my life to be my savior, then today I don't want you to leave out of this place. If you're watching, I don't want you to tune off until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to be saved today. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to just to raise your hand in a moment. That's one. Think about it. Here's the second thing. Maybe you're in this room and man, you will admit that life has caused you to drift. Life has caused you to stray and you fell out of relationship with God and, and you're in this place today, you're watching me right now and you want to be re rededicate your life to God, you want to change direction and you want today to reaffirm your relationship with God and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. If you're watching me, if you're in this room today and if you want to make that decision in a moment, I'm just going to simply ask you to raise your hand if you're watching me online, I'm just going to ask you to put your hand up in the chat or fill out that link that is going to be on your screen in a moment. For all of you that's watching on YouTube, for those of you on Facebook, on our website, in a moment, I'm going to ask that you make this decision. Here's the third thing. The third thing, if you're in this room right now, remember I said, thank God the women had a circle. They had a circle to help them manage and get through life. I want you to know today that the church is a part of your circle or should be a part of your circle. You need a spiritual family. And if you're watching me, if you're in this room and you're here today and you say, you know what? I want to connect with this spiritual family. I need a pastor in my life. I need to be connected to a spiritual church family. ABC is a good place to be, isn't it, y'all? Do you agree with that? And we have people that are watching that are connected to us in Houston, in Florida, Northern Virginia, New York, in D.C. I want to thank God for all of you. Wherever you're watching me from, I want you to connect today with our spiritual family. If you desire to do that today, you can put that in the chat right now. And I thank God for what God is doing in our church in a global way. Listen, right now. If any one of those three things I just mentioned, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you want to rededicate your life, if today you want to connect with our church family, if you're in this room and you want to make that decision today, this is what I want you to do. Just simply put your hand in the air. Just simply put your hand in the air and say, yesterday, I want to reconnect. Yesterday, I want to give my life to the Lord. Yesterday, I want a spiritual family. I see two hands in the back. I see two hands in the back. Come on, church. I, one of our altar workers are coming to you now. Who else in the room today want to make that decision? I prayed for somebody to give their life to the Lord today. I prayed for somebody to get reconnected to the church. I believe there's a couple of others that want to give their life, that need to make that connection. Come on, lift that hand, lift that hand, lift that hand, lift that hand. Where are you? Where are you? As they're coming, y'all, come on, love on them right now. Here comes some more. Here comes some more. Come on. I wish I had a church in here. Praise God. I believe today that there are two more in this room. I believe there are two more in this room. I believe there are two more in this room. I believe there's somebody online making decisions. I believe there are two more in this room. Where are you? 
Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, come on. Is it you? Is it you? Do you need to give your life? Do you need to rededicate? Do you need a church home? Come on. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. Y'all, just let them sit right there on the front row. Let them sit on the front row. Who else is it today? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Somebody's struggling with a decision. I'm going to sing this verse. We're going to sing this verse one time for you. Because he lives. Come on. I'm giving you a chance. Come on, say. Because he lives. Where are you? Where are you today? Come on. We're waiting on you. Don't go another day without a spiritual family. Don't go another day without a pastor. Come on. Tomorrow is not promised. Where are you? If you're online, respond right now. Because I know. Where are you? Because he lives. Come on, one more time. Lift those hands, everybody, and declare. Because he lives. Thank you, Jesus. I can face tomorrow. Oh, because he lives. Come on, declare it. All fear is gone. All fear is gone. Why? Because I know. Praise God for these four that have come. Come on, hearts ought to be going up online. We thank God for you. You may be seated real quickly in the house of the Lord. Listen, we're going to let you stay right here. As soon as this service is over, they're going to take you on the other side, pray with you, and get some information from you. I want to say welcome to the family. Come on, ABC, let's welcome, welcome to our family. Welcome, welcome. For those of you online, welcome to the family. And we're so excited to have you as a part of our family today. Listen, right before we close and we get ready to transition, a couple of things. For all of you parents that are in the room today that have children on the other side, please make your way through this exit door and go right to the fellowship hall and you'll be able to check your children out of that um, 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 of our resurrection party. Well, listen, we're excited. Make note of this, parents that every third Sunday now, we will have children's church as we go forward. Can we praise God for that? Now, we will be able to add more Sundays when we get enough volunteer help because everything we do in the household of faith, it requires volunteers, it requires service. And so the more persons we get to volunteer, to work with our team, listen, then we'll be able to work and add more Sundays, but I can't work the, 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 the present volunteers to death, amen, without adding the, the prop and more help. So the most, but they've done a wonderful job with everything over here today. Can we praise God for them? So in just a moment, we'll be able to go and you'll be able to check out your children. But I want to thank God while I'm on that note, we thank God. God is giving and sending us a dream team. We're building a dream team in this season. So we thank God for Christian Williams, our new praise and worship leader. And we thank God for Ashley Houston, who is our new children's ministry director. Praise God for Ashley Houston. She's over on the other side working hard with our, um, some of our parents, um, Reverend Domena and Sister Alexis and Vanessa have been working hard and we thank God for Ashley Houston, our new children's director. And while I'm on that note, can you praise God for Ariane Abney, who is our new office manager for our church? Can we praise God for them? God is sending us help and we thank God for them. Listen, y'all, today officially starts for us um, we will be back to in-person services going forward every Sunday. Look at your neighbor and say, every Sunday.
Now, we already had a great first service, our 730 service, man. We had a great time in that service, and I thank God for what the move of God was in this service. And so, listen, y'all, let this be a day for you of new beginnings, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's good to see you. Now, I want to continue to see you <laughs> in the house. Amen, somebody. Every Sunday as we continue to go forward, 930 will be our worship service time going forward every Sunday now. Also, next Sunday, I'm excited about this new series. Y'all, I'm preaching a series starting on next week, The Life of Samson, a strong man with an inner weakness, man. And I can't wait to unlock and unload as we walk through the life of Samson on next week, starting next week. So make sure you're in the house and you're ready on next Sunday at 930. Also on next Sunday, I'm excited about many that have stepped up and many of our millennial leaders. I've been praying that God will raise up new leaders and new people that want to serve. And I want to thank God. Um, I don't see her right now, but Alicia Howard. Um, and um, I want to thank God for some of my young adult leaders that are now beginning to serve in a greater way. Um, 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 Sister M M Mary Hamilton and all of them that are part of our new leadership team. Yeah, praise God, man, for some of these young leaders stepping up. And one of the things, man, they've come up with, this ain't my idea, but I thank God for it. It don't have to be my idea, but I'm going to still st take the credit. Amen. Um, but I thank God for them coming alongside of me and coming up. And so starting next Sunday, we have a new award that we will be giving out, and it's called the Impact Award. Now, what this award is, there are so many of you that serve, support, give, and you're generous, and all of that helps make our church what it is today. Praise God. And so every quarter, we're going to be recognizing the great work, the great service, the great spirit of generosity that is demonstrated by so many of you that serve. And so next Sunday, for the first quarter, we will be given our impact award. And over the course of each quarter, you will have the opportunity for people you serve with, you work with, and you volunteer with, you will be able to nominate um, persons to receive the impact award. So I'm excited about the first award that we will give out on next Sunday. Then also, we want to encourage you, many of you, how many of you have been attending the Monday Zoom empowerment sessions on finances we've been having? Have you been blessed by them? Have you been blessed? All right. So we got one more on Sunday, on Monday, tomorrow night um, at uh, 7 p.m. I want to encourage you to log on for that. And so be on at 7 p.m. for that. And then the last thing I have for you today is mark your calendars for May 1st. May 1st. Can you believe, First Lady and our family, we have been here 20 years? Oh, my God. 20 years. So kick off the month of May, it will be our 20th first family anniversary and so we encourage all of you to mark your calendars for that. How many of you have downloaded the ABC app? You've downloaded our new app. I want to encourage you, if you haven't done that yet, to go to um, your Apple store, go to your Google store and download the ABC app. I have a senior church if you're watching online. Somebody put that in the chat. The ABC app, Abyssinia Church, you can go right there and you can watch our services live. There's a host of resources and things there that will help you grow. And so we encourage you to do that. Listen, this Wednesday, I want you to tune in to Let's Grow Online, our online Bible study. I'm excited that me and Christian will be sitting down on Wednesday on for our Let's Grow. So make sure you're watching Wednesday night. And we're going to have a time where we get to know Christian better. I'm going to be interviewing her. We're going to be talking about worship. We're going to be talking about a lot of things online on Monday, on, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. So make sure you're watching and, and tuning in for that time of Let's Grow on Wednesday. And it should be a lot of fun as we sit down and talk about worship and we get to know her and get to know um, our, um, some of the things that God is purposing in her heart on Wednesday. So make sure you tune in on Wednesday night. Amen, somebody. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Amen. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to honor God in our giving today. As we prepare to give this morning, the last thing I want to do is thank God as you're getting ready. To, if you need an offering envelope, lift your hand and our ushers will come to you. If you need an offering envelope, 
I see a hand in the back. I see one over here. If I can get some of my ushers to move right now and, and just bring some envelopes to the hands that are raised. But I want to thank God for all of you that volunteered on yesterday to help make our community feeding a tremendous success. We thank God. We thank God. Hey, um, yeah, go to that picture right now. Let's thank God. Look at y'all. On yesterday, we were able to be a blessing to over 200 people that we served and blessed because of your generosity, you online, because of your giving. We thank God for you. And it was a tremendous day. Not only did we bless over at the center on the new um, homeless shelter where there's over 150 residents, but we also sponsored Easter weekend dinner over at the Union Mission. And so we praise God for all of you that have given, you sold, for those of you that cooked turkeys, for those of you that prepared sides, for everybody that transported and served. Can we give God praise for being able to be a blessing to those in need and many of you online in other places you are a part of what we're doing here in the 757 so I thank God for every seed every gift because this is what ministry is your resources your tithes your giving and your offering helps us to impact our city and abroad so can we praise God one more time we thank God for our missions coordinator Amber Amber where are you wave your hand Amber are you in the building thank God for her leadership come on praise God even living in Richmond, she's still running missions ministry in Norfolk, Virginia. Man, church has changed, hasn't it, y'all? We can still conduct ministry and don't have to be in the local area. But I want to thank God for her, Bernice, and all of you that helped to play a role in us being a blessing to our city. I love our church, and I love what God is doing in our ministry. Come on, let's get ready to sow today. Let's get ready to give. If you want to give electronically this morning, you see there on the screen, you can text your offering. If you text that number, you can give electronically. You can give through Givelify. You can go to our website. That number will lead you right to an opportunity to give online. With those envelopes raised, your phones raised, come on, let's raise our offerings. Those of you online, if you're giving in this moment, type right now, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. Let's raise our phones as we prepare to give. Y'all, we're going to give and go at the same time. But those of you up front, if you have offerings to give, they're going to take you in the back. Matter of fact, why don't we let them be the first ones to go out? I'm going to pray. Leave them right there for a second, Nancy. And then we're going to pray and we're going to get ready to go. Let's lift our offerings. Father, we thank you for our risen Savior. We thank you that you thought we were worth it, that you gave your life for us today. Now, Father, we honor you with our tithes, and we honor you with our offerings. We honor you with our seed. We sow now online, and we thank you now for every gift that you've given us. We know that you are the provider of every good and perfect gift. So receive our offerings now. Receive our tithes now. Receive our seeds now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, bless our week. I pray that we have a powerful and productive week. Now may the peace, the power, and the presence of our God be with us until we meet again. And all of God's people say together, amen. Come on, let's stand all over the house today. God bless you. I pray that you have an amazing week. If you would turn to the middle aisle. God bless you. Have a great week. And go out of the middle aisle as we give our offerings to God.